Welcome back everybody. Now today I've got a collection of four interesting gadgets, which I'm not sure if they're going to work or not, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to call this video. But I wanted to try them out. They seem like they'd go well together in a video, so let's get right started testing out four unusual gadgets to see if they really work. I'm not really big on preliminary, so let's get started with the first item, and that is Simply Hold Screen Holder. This one was mailed to me quite a while ago. I just kind of, I took a look at the box. And when I saw this, I thought, oh great, just an, another generic screen holder. I've got so many of those have been sent to me, most of which don't fi I don't find very interesting. But the other day I was going through my stack of stuff out there and I realized that this one is a little bit different. If you look at the photo, this is a screen holder that attaches to your leg. And that seemed kind of ridiculous at first, but after thinking about it, maybe that's actually not such a bad idea because then you don't need something to attach it to or some place to hold it because you always have your leg with you. So I want to try this out and see if it actually works. So let's crack it open right now and get started. All right, the brace that goes around your leg. This is the phone holder itself and a gooseneck. Now, the, every phone holder I've done that didn't work well, that has a design like this, this is where it usually fails because they have some weak, cheap gooseneck that they cut corners on. This, I can already tell, feels very strong. I have high hopes already. I haven't assembled it yet. According to their instructions, you simply screw the gooseneck into the strap pocket. Okay, according to their instructions, we got this. But it feels pretty sturdy. All right, let me move over to the couch and try this out. Look who just invited themselves to the party. But I digress. Let's get to the Simply Hold now. I've already got my phone in there. It should be pretty simple to strap it to your leg. Let's see what happens. It's a very simple, basic design here. I guess it goes like this. Probably shouldn't have my phone in there first, but... That's pretty interesting. I've watched the instructional videos for all these products, by the way. I try to do my homework before I use these to make sure I'm doing it right. They seem to say that an S shape is the most solid. This already feels pretty solid. You can have it uh, portrait or landscape. Just gotta tighten this a little bit Ugh, around my leg. I'm gonna be perfectly honest, as ridiculous as this seems, it seems to work. So as I'm using this, I realize you do need to keep your leg kind of steady. You can't be moving, you can't be tapping your leg. Put some music on, you're gonna be, your screen's gonna be flopping around. You definitely want to keep your, your leg to be pretty stable, but if I, when I use my hand to touch the screen, it does seem to be pretty stable. This, this gooseneck is one of the strongest I've ever felt for a phone stand, probably the strongest. This is something that I was sure was gonna be iffy at best, and it actually works quite well. Now, if you wanna get up and go do something, I don't think you really want that. You probably want to make sure you're settled in for a while before you strap on your leg. But once you do, it pretty much stays in place like, I, like they say it will. And it doesn't move around that much. This is really solid. So I think the Simply Hold does pretty well. All right, next up, this one is another one that looks kind of like something that's already been around, but it's a little bit of a different take on it. This is the Toadfish Non-Tipping Can Cooler. You guys all probably all remember a few years ago, everybody had those tumblers that didn't tip over. In fact, I did a review of the red copper mug myself. Believe it or not, I actually, even though I don't, I don't think they sell this anymore, I still use it and it still works. But you've all seen videos of mugs like this, right? Put it on the table, it doesn't fall over, lift it straight up. One thing I definitely know for sure is you need a very smooth surface. I put this on somewhat smooth surfaces, it falls right over. And I think that some of the negative reviews of, of items like this are probably for that same reason. It doesn't stick well on all surfaces. You have to make sure it's very smooth. I've also found out you really have to keep this clean or it won't stick either. Now, I originally bought this on Amazon for 24 bucks. I was going to use it in my draft top video, but that video ended up getting kind of long anyways. I just figured I'd save it for another video. And that would be this one. This was actually on the Home Shopping Network. and They said it was a reinvention of the koozie. It's a can cooler and a non-tip holder. It features double wall vacuum insulation. It's made of stainless steel. And this might be the most important part. It has these rubber locking gaskets. You can take this one off and they include another one that will hold thinner cans and bottles. This is for thin cans and bottles. And this one is for regular cans. So let me grab a can and see how well it works just on this table and then try some other tests on it. I should point out that none of their instructions or their videos point out how to use this gasket. I had to find them on Home Shopping Network to see how it's actually used. I was pretty sure, but I wasn't 100% sure. They should definitely mention their instructions what this is. All right, here we go, Toadfish. Can of soda. 
as I expect, it should work well. It'll look straight up. So I can see with a can, especially when you got kids around or pets. I mean, Bailey's tail has spilled so many things around my house before. It's certainly useful. Taking it out, they say you have to pull this back. I guess when you, if you don't pull it back, you have a suction. There's a vacuum there that makes it more difficult. When you pull that back, it slides right out. Let me switch gaskets now. And they say you can put thin can like this Coke energy drink, which I happen to like. I'm not much energy drinks. I actually like these. That's weird. It makes kind of a, a flatulent sound when it goes in there. It does hold it. I guess it's better than nothing, but it doesn't feel as solid as the... It's kind of moving around in there. Try it on this old pan right here. And... And... Oh! Now they... They show a guy with a surfboard walking to the beach with his drink on his surfboard like that. I'm pretty sure that a surfer won't do that. I know it's just for demonstration though, but it does seem to work pretty well. I mean... That's not going anywhere. Well, maybe I push it too far. <laughs> All right, well, I guess it has its limits. Now they say that the, uh, the smaller gas is good for bottles. Let's try that out. I guess the bottle goes in first and the gasket goes over it. Do you need the gasket? I feel like you just need the regular one, although it does move around there kind of. I guess that's better than having it just sitting out though. But I can tell you the one thing though, it won't, it won't work on certain bottles. For my craft beer drinking friends, this Goose Island Bourbon County edition won't fit in there at all. Although I'd probably put this in a glass anyways. See how it sticks in this glass? Oh, it's, it's not sticking on the glass. Interesting. Huh. Well, it doesn't seem like it wants to stay sideways on some surfaces. One more test of the non-tip toadfish koozie. I'm going to put it in my car and drive around this parking lot. Here we go. I made a few laps. I kind of took some hard corners. It stayed up in that case. What's weird is on my fridge, it fell right off. So, I mean, it's, it seems like it doesn't hold the vertical suction very well, but when it's horizontal, it seems like it holds pretty well. I don't want to be irresponsible on the freeway having it hit some car behind me, but so I picked an empty parking lot here, but it seems like when it's a flat surface, it holds pretty well, as long as it's smooth. Vertical, not so much. But really, are you going to be storing your drinks on a vertical surface? I don't think so. If the point is to not to have it tip over, if a flat surface works, then I think it pretty much works. This looks like it's be some sort of a laptop stand or something. This is called the multifunctional portable foldable car seat tray, black table car vehicle seat portable food meal snack tray. Not exactly the most memorable name out there. This is actually an organizer for the back seat of the car. This is probably the lowest rated item that I'm doing here. This was a 3.6 on Amazon. I paid 15 bucks for it. A lot of people seem to just use it as a drink holder and there are two drink holders here, but there are other uses. So let me see how useful it really is. Let's out of the car and try it out. All right, so we're at McDonald's. I figured that's a pretty good variety of stuff to try out for my tray. You know what's funny is last time I went to McDonald's, I actually ordered a nine-piece Nuggets, which I don't think they've had available since like the 90s. Just shows how old I am. But I think McDonald's will have a pretty good variety of stuff that a lot of kids would have in the back seat, like chicken nuggets, small fries, small drink. So I'm going to park and try out all these different varieties and see how well this tray does with different sized drinks, different sized fries different types of food and see how it actually works. All right, I'm ready. I'm actually pretty hungry right now. So hopefully this tray works. Folds and unfolds pretty easily. And you got this strap right here, which seems pretty basic as well. So all you really do is just put it around the seat in front of you and hopefully it works. There were no instructions with this. Nothing. There were no instructions at all. It took me a minute. The first time I did it, I did it upside down but I finally got it in place. All right, so here we go. I, you probably can't tell too well on the on camera because everything's black here. All right, so there it is. It feels pretty sturdy. So let's load this thing up, see how it looks. Some people are putting their phone right here. I guess that works. Small fry, where would a small fry go? So really these, these aren't really good for fries. I don't think a fry is gonna really fit there that well. You don't want up against your phone. I guess you just have to rest it on there. So not there, not there. Just kind of sit it there, I guess. So I'll just put my fry right there. 
And I got a small hamburger. How about if I set it right there for right now? 10 piece chicken nuggets. Oh, it does hold a medium drink. It holds a medium drink. I got a full meal here plus my phone. So I think I'm pretty much set. I don't know about you guys, but when I eat my lunch, I like to watch videos. So I have nowhere to watch them. Oh wait, I've got a phone stand that actually will work back here. <laughs> How about the Simply Hold? I'm gonna watch one of my favorite YouTubers, Arvin Ash. If you've not ever watched Arvin Ash, I suggest watching Arvin Ash. He's one of my favorite YouTubers. If you like, if you like physics, hot mustard sauce is the only chicken nugget sauce I've ever liked from McDonald's since the first time I ever tried these. I think around 1984 or 1985. First time I ever had chicken nuggets from McDonald's. I was playing in a band. I was in high school. Our singer got put in jail, and we picked him up in Orange County from jail. There, he was starving and went and got some chicken nuggets from McDonald's. I tried one in, and he had hot mustard sauce. It's the first time I ever tried hot mustard sauce, first time I ever tried nuggets. I've been hooked ever since. I don't think I could be more set than this. I think this tray organizer has, works really well. It feels very sturdy. It holds a lot of stuff. I have no complaints about this whatsoever. It actually works better than I thought it would. I thought for sure it was going to be flimsy. It might fall off. When you pair that with a Simply Hold, you've got like your entire dining and entertainment center in the back seat of the car. I don't think you can go wrong with that. Here's another one that was sent to me unsolicited, and I definitely wanted to try this one as soon as I got it. This is a $13 Hyper Whistle, which is built as the world's loudest whistle. They say it goes up to 142 dB. First, I was thinking it's just kind of a novelty item. Why would you need something that's so loud? Then I was thinking there are emergency purposes for it, like lifeguards, self-defense even, maybe an SOS if you're lost in the woods. There are reasons you would want a really loud whistle like this. It also floats. They said it has a tri-frequency design and antimicrobial composite. So this one I'm definitely gonna go outside for and try it out. I'm certainly not gonna do it in here. So let me head outside, maybe bring Brandon with me to help me out and try this out. All right, yeah, I've lived in Vegas for 26 years. I've never been out here before. And there's two ways to test in the, the hyper whistle. One is to see if someone far away can hear it, which I've got Brandon exactly a mile away over that way. He's standing by and I've also got kind of a, I don't have a DV meter, but I've got one on my phone that'll be kind of a down and dirty measurement. Hey everybody. I'm walking over in the desert just to see if uh, I can hear the whistle. Trying to hear a sound from all the way over there in the distance. The distance on Google Maps from here to that building over there is about one mile. And supposedly this whistle has a range of two miles. So I'm gonna see if I can hear it from all the way over here in the desert. All right. While Brandon's getting ready, I'm gonna put my earplugs in so I don't forget. They say you can actually damage your hearing. Uh, this might be a good self-defense thing. If someone's attacking, you can blow their eardrums out at least, if it really works. These are the earplugs that came with the Hyper Whistle. I'm using those. All right, so you're recording, you're listening, right? Yes. Here we go. I'm gonna put over my DB meter, stand by, and here it comes in a second. You ready? Yes. My DB meter stopped working. I'm gonna try one more time without the DB meter. This DB meter's not working. I heard it. You did? I heard it, I heard it, I heard it. Oh, wow. I definitely heard that. You did, okay. Yeah, I, I definitely heard that that time. Yeah, I'm gonna try one without an earplug in. Oh wait, that's loud. I was thinking it didn't seem loud with these earplugs in. I took an earplug out and it's loud. Wow, I think it actually overloaded my meter because the meter doesn't stop working after I blow into it. So at first I was thinking that the, the whistle wasn't that loud and I realized how good these earplugs worked. When I took one earplug out and blew half as loud, it would blare to my ear. Brand did hear it a mile away and it actually overloaded my meter so my meter stopped working. So I think the hyper whistle actually works pretty well. Now I'm gonna get out of this 111 degree heat and go back home and wrap this thing up. All right, let me quickly wrap things up. As far as the Toadfish non-tip can cooler goes, I should mention they do have a thin can version. I don't think the gasket works probably quite as well as that one probably will. I do think 24 bucks, it may be a little bit steep for something like this. If you get it and your expectations are realistic as far as the non-tip feature goes, you'll probably like it. Now, as far as the Simply Hold goes, that's definitely the one I had the lowest expectations for. I was sure that was gonna be a disaster, but actually it worked pretty well. It's a little bit weird to strap it to your leg and if you have to get up, that's a little bit inconvenient. Surprisingly, it worked pretty well and I think there are situations where people will actually 
quite like something like that. I should also point out that you can pull it out of the brace and use it as a table stand. They also say it works with the Nintendo Switch. As far as the backseat car organizer goes, that's probably the least weird of all of these products, but also that type of product tends to not hold up so well. I was surprised at how well this one held up. It didn't seem like it was about to give or fall. It's still in my car. It's still holding in place. I think there's a lot of people, especially parents, who are going to find something like this to be quite useful. And finally, the hyper whistle. I should point out also, Brandon did mute his phone when I was blowing the whistle in there, so he wasn't hearing it through the phone. He was hearing it across the desert. They say it's the world's loudest whistle. I don't know if that's the case. My dB meter was just kind of a quick phone version. It's not highly accurate, but it did register 130 decibels on there. I was hearing it bouncing off the mountains in the background, so it's, it's certainly a loud whistle. I would suggest if you use it for self-defense to put it in your mouth and plug your ears, otherwise you might blow your own eardrums out as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've used any of these products, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you next time.